I was asked the other evening if I could do one thing for the rest of my life, even if I didn't get paid, what would that be? It would most definitely be teaching people. And you can probably guess what I'm going to say I would like to teach, okay? Taxes are just a way of life, especially for your U.S. taxpayer. So I'm going to be more intentional because you all have sent me messages on LinkedIn, you all have hit me up on the contact page on America's Favorite EA, and you've even sent me emails. When people take the effort to make sure that they reach out to you correctly and request something, that is something that I have always been taught to pay attention to and honor if I can. Welcome to the Tax Relief with Timbaland Bowens podcast. Are you behind on taxes? Is the IRS threatening you or your business? Are you overwhelmed and confused about how to resolve your tax issues? Let's join Timbaland as she explains your options and how she may be able to help. Timbaland Bowens is America's favorite EA. Hey, family. Welcome back to the podcast. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Now, I warned you in the previous episode, episode 29, that this episode was going to be a big deal, right? Because now we've reached episode 30, and it's crazy because you all know I like my stats and facts. As I was looking up stuff, I saw that there are 4 million podcasts out there. But check this out. During 2022, only half a million, so 500,000 of those were considered active. Now, defining that is a little difficult, but from the research that I did, this study, they consider the podcast active if they only put out one episode during 2022. And what? We put out 20-something, so we're going full steam ahead with this momentum. And today, in episode 30, I want to talk about filling the tax literacy gap. You all hear me say it episode after episode after episode. I am here to fill the tax literacy gap. I am passionate about filling the tax literacy gap. Now, some of you all are kind. You probably shake your head and you're like, yeah, she's passionate about that. We don't know what it is. It's not important. But my friend, it is. So today we're going to talk about what the tax literacy gap is. I'm going to talk about how... I personally feel that gap right now, but then I want to give you a little bit of insight into what I'm actually working on and how I plan on filling that gap in the future, as in for the next three to five years, okay? First things first, what is the tax literacy gap? So I don't think I've ever heard anybody else say tax literacy gap, so make sure you give me my props for coming up with that terminology, right? But When we look at the literacy gap, it's one of the things like we hear about financial literacy and what a literacy gap is simply is the difference between what you know and what you should know. Now, I always talk about how taxes are a language of their own. We have tax and ease, right? However, when you go to file your tax return, you are responsible for everything on those forms And when you sign that, you are locked in, okay? The IRS expects you to understand everything that's on there because you signed it, saying it's true. So there is a standard for what you should know. But guess what? You probably didn't have to guess too hard. Taxes aren't taught in school, not for individuals. It's not taught in school for business owners. And when I say that, it is taught in school When you go to college, you want to become a tax professional, an accountant, but not in middle school. It's not taught in high school. So you're expected, once you start making income that passes the the threshold for you to file a tax return, to automatically understand taxes. So my burning desire and passion is to help average taxpayers just like you fill in that gap between what you actually know and what you should know. So early on in my practice, and this is once I went out on my own, okay, because 
Then, of course, I became client facing. I was the face of the whole shop, right? That's when I actually discovered the tax literacy gap. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I've never heard anybody else say it, but it's been a thing all along. It was crazy to me to review tax returns with taxpayers that were married and maybe didn't have a business, maybe they're single and didn't have a business, and for them to respond like, oh my goodness, so excited, almost as excited about me as me about taxes, because they actually understood what they were signing. People told me nobody's ever taken the time to explain the tax return to me. And I was kind of like, yikes, so you sign this every year and you don't even know what it means? But we're not going to talk about that in this episode. It amazed me as I start picking up on this pattern and... Again, I love tax law. I'll go read it, something passes, and I geek out and go all in. You probably just made the ugliest face like, what? But that's my life. But I get that it's not like that for everyone. I'll never forget, I met with a couple. They had been married for almost 40 years. They were in their 60s, right? And when I reviewed their business return with them and their individual return with them, They thanked me and said in their almost 40 years of filing together, no preparer had ever explained their tax return in a way that they actually understood. For almost 40 years, they just trusted the tax professional to be the expert and signed in blind faith. Guys, I do think that we should trust professionals, let them be the experts in what they do, but This is a legally binding document between you and the IRS. You have to have some concept of what you're actually signing. But then as I went on my venture to become America's favorite EA and, you know, back taxes shouldn't ruin your life, I picked up on another pattern. The people who are best in business, they are horrible at taxes, Okay, they have no understanding and some of them don't want to understand in the same depth that I do. And that's fine, but they still need to understand the implications of what they are signing. Another instance, I've had clients in their 80s who owe every single year and nobody was ever able to explain to them why, because they had multiple sources of retirement income. I've worked with People in their 80s that owe $20,000, $30,000, same reason. And guess what? Once we were able to get that issue resolved, it stopped happening, and it was all because of filling the tax literacy gap, educating people. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, because it gives me fire to be able to empower you as a taxpayer to make an informed decision about your taxes that's going to affect your life. And if you have children, it's going to affect your family. If you have a business, it's going to affect that too. And even the people that you serve, because if you get in payroll tax trouble, if you get in tax trouble and have to close, you can't serve your clients, right? So how do I fill that gap right now? Right now, you can go to the Bowens Tax Solutions page and you can check out Tax Tips with Timlin. It's a blog that I started, I want to say 2019, maybe it was 2020. There's also a free blog on americasfavoriteea.com. Next, we have YouTube. And guys, I have to thank you, all of your feedback with the podcast, YouTube. At the beginning of this year, probably when we were like at episode 23 or something, I let you all know for this year, I wanted to take the following on YouTube from 200 something and hit a thousand by December. And guess what? It's June 2nd and earlier this week, we crossed the 900 subscriber threshold. That is filling the tax literacy gap. Every comment that I see that says, thank you, it just fuels that fire to keep on doing it. And if you're listening right now, you know the other way that we're filling the tax literacy gap is right here with Tax Relief with Timlin Bowens. Now, for me in my life, I was asked the other evening if I could do one thing for the rest of my life, 
even if I didn't get paid, what would that be? It would most definitely be teaching people. And you can probably guess what I'm going to say I would like to teach, okay? Taxes are just a way of life, especially for your U.S. taxpayer. So I'm going to be more intentional because you all have sent me messages on LinkedIn. You all have hit me up on the contact page on America's Favorite EA, and you've even sent me emails When people take the effort to make sure that they reach out to you correctly and request something, that is something that I have always been taught to pay attention to and honor if I can. So with that being said, if you're following me on social media, you've seen that I've been sharing, I'm writing for different outlets, and in doing so, I've kind of let Writing Wednesdays go away. Well, guess what? Next week, I believe the date is June 7th, Writing Wednesdays are back. So you can expect a new blog post on America's Favorite EA every single Wednesday, okay? Now, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. Now, there are going to be a variety of topics. Some will be for small business owners. Some will be for retirees, okay? If you can't tell, those are the people I work with the most, but... I'll also have some for tax pros because remember, my whole thing is impact. If I can teach another tax pro how to do something, then man, that's a boom ripple effect where I can help even more people. The other thing that's completely new, you heard it here first, in September, September 18th to be exact, I am launching something, all right? Now... You know, every episode, if you watch my videos on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, I say, hey, family. Well, we're going to make it a little more intimate, okay? So the family is going to launch. It's going to be for small business owners. I'm passionate about filling this gap that even if you aren't in tax trouble, I want to make sure you don't get in tax trouble. So what this group is going to be for, it will be one that actually does get to meet with me twice a month, okay, two hours each meeting, and as a business owner, you will be able to come about different tax and financial questions. I've been asked the question, hey, should I be an S-Corp? When should I actually start looking at this? Hey, what entity type is best for me if I want to hire my family members? We're going to deal with all that in the family, but we're going to take it even a little more intimate, there's going to be a group called the cousins. Okay. So we have the family, we have the cousins. Now with the family, it's going to be subscription based. You can stay as long as you like to, right? Cancel when you want to. With the cousins, it is going to be a small cohort. To get into the cousins, you are going to have to fill out an application. Okay. It's not going to be more than five people. This Cousins group, the cohorts are going to be six months. They're going to also meet with me twice a month, but it's going to be more of a mastermind style. And if they'd like, they can also add a one-on-one. Now, before you disconnect from the podcast and go looking for it, if you're interested in being in the family or being one of my cousins, you need to reach out on the contact page and let me know, and I can get you the details. Because we have the official launch on September 18th, but a beta program is going to start in August. And last but not least, I mentioned before, if I can help a tax pro learn what I do, I may only be able to reach a 1,000 taxpayers. But if I teach somebody else how to do it, that's still me indirectly reaching 2,000, okay? So we are going to have Tax Pro Circle because no matter how far away I try to run from the tax pros, they just keep following me all over the place. So with that, it's going to be specifically for tax pros that are pursuing resolution and representation. Yes, I teach other topics. Yes, I teach about the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes, I teach about hiring your child. But I don't want to teach those things at a tax pro level. So like I said, this is specifically for people who are pursuing resolution and representation. 
Now, those people too will need to reach out because that is going to be application only. Um, Yeah, if we're not a good fit to work with each other, you all already know my saying, it may not be me, but go get the help you need. But I just wanted to share with you all where we're going because honestly, I've had so many business owners reach out and ask, hey, will you do this type of consulting again? And I've said, no, 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 no. And I said, wait a minute, this still fits within fill in the tax literacy gap. So let me go back and take a look at this. So again, we're at episode 30. It has a little bit of a different feel, but since you all are my family, I did want to let you know what was going on. And I'm still going to ask you, now that you actually understand the concept of the tax literacy gap, you understand what I'm doing here, will you please do me a huge favor? Make sure you're subscribed on your favorite platform. Make sure you leave a review and share this with other taxpayers because we are going to fill the tax literacy gap one taxpayer at a time. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen today. I'd like to thank Jim Ray Consulting Services for helping me get this message out to you. I hope you found the information helpful. Did you know one in 50 people have a tax problem? Please share this episode with your friends and family because you never know who may need help. Again, thanks for listening. Hey, just as a reminder, this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. It provides a framework and possible solutions for solving your tax problems, but it is not legally binding. Please consult your tax professional regarding your specific tax situation. 